Welcome back to the news, let's jump in. First up, North America has a new rank one, but there's something special about this kid. Younger brother to ex LCS and multi rank one Viper and twin to current LCS and ex rank one general sniper, my sword Crimson makes the third Shora brother in the family to hit rank one, but not really playing Riven. As we can see in his champion pool, Crimson broke away from his brother's example of being an only Riven player and plays a more meta, but still bruiser centric scope of champions. There is a fourth Shora brother, the oldest Moaz, but his peak was platinum. So according to his Twitter, he studies neuroscience instead. Don't know what their parents feed this family, but holy shit, what a talented group of dudes. Speaking of talent, up next, Tyler1 has just received chess.com's best chess streamer. Honestly, not much to say to this story, but that's all there is. Just Tyler excelling at whatever he puts his mind to once again. Now, have you ever wondered what actually is high elo? Maybe you've heard iron, bronze, silver are low elo, gold, platinum, emerald is mid elo, and diamond and above is high elo. Well, that's kind of roughly what I thought personally, but Riot disagrees. From Riot's own UI comes this graphic showing the depiction of average player is Emerald to Iron 3, Skilled as Emerald 2 to Diamond 2, Elite as Diamond 1 to Challenger, and Professional in its own tier. I don't really know what to make of this list, just let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And for the main topic of today, we have slight spoiler warnings, so if you haven't watched the LEC yesterday, now is your point to click off. Alrighty, we have some controversy surrounding the outcome of one of the games in the LEC Winter Split Final between G2 and Mad Lions. I'm going to play the clip first to see if you guys can catch it before I show an explanation of what actually happened. After you've seen the clip, comment what you think happened before continuing the video to see if you're right. You can see as we come into this, watch the wall from Preskewi. Mirren gets stuck and can't come into the fight. So it ends up as a four versus five. And from that point forward, Madeline's Koya running from the hills as G2 are able to take the fight in the front to back. Mirren, that ultimate being unavailable with so much damage lost in such a narrow choke point. Take a second to comment what you think went wrong in the clip you just watched. Done? All right, here is Cadrill following the broadcast to explain exactly what happened. So it gets used initially by uh, G2 to disengage the fight, and then it instantly respawns. So then what happens is Yike takes Rel and Blast Cones into them when it was already used. So as Cajal explains, not only did G2 use the Blast Cone initially, but they use it again right after the fight is disengaged to re-engage onto Mad Lions, which allows them to clean up what was meant to be a finished fight. So it's a bit of a weird situation. G2 end up winning this game, but whether that particular fight that was won by the bugged plant caused the win is questionable. I mean, bottom line is I guess G2 won a fight that shouldn't have really happened, so there's that, but maybe G2 are gonna win anyway. One thing that was called into question though was referee calling or chrono Break, except it's up to players in the middle of the game to call bugs as they see them. Even coaches can't call for chrono breaks or pauses. Which I think is just insane and ridiculous, having to ask players to monitor your own champion, teammates champions, enemy champions, ability cooldowns of yourself and the enemy, and try to see if any bugs are happening inside the absolute clusterfuck that is league team fighting. Either way, it shouldn't have happened. And for those about to question the actual respawn time of the blast cone on the chemtech map, like maybe the plant was meant to be there, according to the lol wiki, the respawn timer begins 30 seconds seconds after the plant corpse goes away. The respawn timer is then about three to four minutes, so it was definitely a bug. And as if this wasn't bad enough, the official streams actually crashed, leaving only the co-streamers live as the event was happening. Check out the clip and then the chat reaction. But whereas MDK are gonna look to protect him. Okay, just to put it in perspective, Caps is 2K ahead of Preskawi, but Supa is 2K ahead of Caps. <laughs> I wanna look at that ward in mid lane though. You can see it there. Really nice one that they've actually placed just in that mid. So you can look for that there. Thank you, Observers, for a TP ward for BB. I think that's all they're trying to play for. Maybe you can look for Caps instead with his flash being up a little bit sooner. But as long as MDK are able to avoid mid wave, they're going to be fine. This is huh? a uh, struggle, though, as wave. So this black screen went on for a good five minutes or so, and when the stream resumed, Mad were wiped and G2 were doing the Baron. So the black screen actually cut out one of the most important parts of the game. Maybe those layoffs from Riot Games weren't such a good idea after all. Anyway, if you enjoyed this type of League news content, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.